What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, if you have a Sportster, you thinking about getting a Sportster, or heck, even if you're just watching this video, make sure you check out the playlist of this build because we have tons of other videos and much more to come. So hit that subscribe button and check out the playlist. In this video, I just want to show you what I think is the best and cheapest speedometer relocation for your Sportster. Now I looked around online and I didn't find too many things for relocating your speedometer on the Sportster besides dismounting it to the lower forks or you know to the left side, right, right to the left of the engine, things like that. I don't want to have to look down at it and go into T-bars, which I know you see that in the video now. You haven't seen the T-bar video yet, but I promise it's coming. It just took a lot of time to get those things set up, but I just want to release this quick video for you all today. Because I think it's worthy. There's not too many videos out there showing you how to, or showing you what it's like relocating your speedometer on the Sportster. And I just want to make sure anyone who's interested in T-bars has this video because it's necessary. If you're going to move to T-bars, you cannot have this traditional stock, whatever you want to call it, OEM uh, speedometer mount. You're going to have to switch it up. So today, I'm going to show you exactly how I did that, and sure, I know there's other ways you can get, uh, well, you can buy the other mount I have, and you can actually mount it directly to the bars. Actually, it needs Lucky Dave's bars, and again, guys, we'll get into the bars later on, but the speedometer mount is what this video is about. These are Lucky Dave's bars, and Lucky Dave's, they actually make a mount for the speedometer to attach to the bars. But one thing about that is I've heard, I don't know, the Loki Dave's one, I imagine it's probably going to be a good fit. It's not going to mess up the finish on the bars. But basically, wherever you clamp that down at, I got a good feeling it's going to ding up your paint there. And I'm not really about that. So I'm trying to get away from a clamp that's going to mount the speedometer to the bars. So I've got this other idea. I was digging deep in the forms, and this is what I found. Uh, basically, what I'm going to do is put this into... A different mount which I'm going to show you here right now and using the headlamp visor bolts I basically went to the store grabbed some longer grade 8 bolts made a little spacer that I'll show you here in a bit and uh, extended it and mounted the speedometer there so everybody sit back relax and enjoy the video and again sorry I I'm doing the voiceover because when we were shooting this video, I mean, it's, I have to tell you, it is hot here in Texas. So I had the fans on in the garage, and I didn't think I'd be posting the actual sound from the videos, but it didn't turn out too bad. Cut scene or what, dude? <laughs> so, what, we're just installing the, uh, the indicator lights. Oops. Come on. It's essentially just light bulbs in there, and then when they light up, they go through that little like piece of plastic translucent slip of paper, which kind of gives it the either neutral light, oil light, gas light. Did your bike have a gas light on it? Yeah, dude. Well, I used to, not anymore, bro. I think you gotta do this. Side down. Get it lined up in the front. Sweet. 
so easier to do upside down. Alright, man. Yeah, so that's plastic, so you just want to get that you know, just tight enough, and I don't want to torque down on it too much. somewhere like that, something like that. So you're definitely going to need some risers, because if you can move your hand, dude. So you see you got like, yeah, like gap that between here and here. So you're going to need longer bolts and some sort of bushing. Probably a sturdy bolt too, because you don't want it to flop around. It's kind of a lot of length to give it more leverage to snap itself off, so. Yeah, you know. Let's head over to the Home Depot and uh, Let's. Car store. You buying lunch or what, Bubba? All right, folks. Went to the store and picked up this uh, pipe. You know how thick it is or what the specs on this is? Uh, not really. You got it at Ace Hardware. Uh, fits the 516th bolt we're trying to use through it. A little loose, but I mean, it works good. Got this uh, 516th. Uh, grade 8 bolt. Uh, hopefully put it in like that one on each side, black yeah. them out, and it's a screw into the visor. So you missed it off camera, but we cut off a piece already, and I was holding on to it, and I got like all these little metal shards on my fingers, dude. Probably not super uh, healthy, but it is what it is. So measuring it up, and we cut it with the the uh, I don't know, what do we call this? Saw, I don't know, some sort of saw thing that go, connects to a uh, air compressor. Oh. So we used to cut it. So we actually cut the other one with the hacksaw, but uh, that obviously was taking way too long. So, we're going to set up the next one and show you guys what's cutting it. I feel like the blade's going to come cracking off and hitting the face. So that was a pretty painful process. So we're just gonna hit it with the file. We'll do that right now. Get the now. rough edges off and uh, hopefully we have spray paint we hit it with a coat of black. Alrighty folks, so we'll, we'll get back to you when we got that cleaned up and we try to paint it and install it. The holes on this mount didn't quite line up exactly with the headlight visor and it took me quite a while to realize that I kept getting one side of it not the other. Well, the holes didn't line up so I ended up having to drill them out here as you see. Not a big deal but at this point in the build I was frustrated just wanted to get it over with and that's exactly why you see it here not sprayed black. I was just trying to get it slapped together so I could finish up the T-bars. So again, uh, make sure you subscribe. Check out the rest of the playlist. We got a lot more content coming. Uh, you're going to see these T-bars get thrown on. You're going to see tank lift, wire tuck, coil, ignition, relocation, all that stuff. And one more thing on the speedometer mount. One of the perks of doing it this way is I didn't have to extend the wires for the speedometer. Had I mounted them to the top of the bars or higher on the bars uh, with that mount I was telling you about earlier, I would have had to extend the wiring. Now the Burley kit that I got, and you're going to see a lot about that in the future videos, it had the wire extensions for the hand controls, but not for the speedometer. So for that, not a big deal, but I would have had to uh, find some extensions or make some extensions, just cut and solder, 
and doing it this way, uh, you can definitely, as you can see here, you can still see the speedometer just fine and was able to avoid all that extra work. So again, if you have a Sportster, you think you want a Sportster, you're looking for a Sportster, make sure, check out the playlist, check out the channel, like this video, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.